Hi, Country Changes. Welcome back to another month uh, of webinars and awesome content. This month, we're actually featuring Coolum and Shire. Um, and Coolum and Shire is a wonderful little region um, or area in the Riverina that has a great deal of beautiful villages and townships. And we're joined by uh, Linda Nolan, who actually lives in one of those villages. And I'm sure she'll tell us a lot more about the town of Ganmain. Linda, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Leticia, for having me. <laughs> You've got a beautiful, um, I guess, path that you've walked to get to where you are now in terms of settling in Gan, Maine. Uh, you're mm -hmm. both a business owner and gallery owner. Tell me a little bit about what brought you to Gan, Maine and, I guess, establishing yourself in that space. What brought me to Gan, Maine was possibly COVID in a way. I, I decided I'd go for a three-month drive and break from my corporate career up north. And uh, I ended up here, brothers nearby, families here, but um, I was pretty isolated when we got here because of COVID. So what brought me was a break from a busy world. Yeah, and what I might do is even share my screen right now so people can get a bit of an idea of where we're talking about. And I think when you, um, we're about five, Coolman Shire is here. Yeah. Uh, nice and close to Wagga, about five hours from Sydney, roughly five hours from Melbourne and three from Canberra. And 10 minutes from Coolman Township, you've got um, mm -hmm. Dan Main there. So it's a, a nice, and you've got all these other surrounding uh, Riverina towns, which all offer something really unique in itself. But what you've managed to create, Linda, is this wonderful gallery and, and community around you. Can you share a little bit about what you do and um, what you focus on there? I've uh, been very fortunate to, to create my dream and the dream is to have a gallery that's shared with the community. And um, I've found a skill of teaching. So I somehow have connected with the community through my passion, my heart passion of art and what it does to our mental health. So I, I just love sharing art and what it does for me. And I see that now in all my students. So there's been a lot of women here um, in children who have um, found art and found a way to relax their busy minds. So. I'm sharing art, but I'm also sharing a space in this gallery that people can come and rest for a while, like just, you know, out of the busy world. So um, that's pretty much what I do here. I love, um, I love that and look at some of these pictures. I mean, wow, there's some talent there for sure. <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a happy place. It's a gorgeous place. And well, I'm in an old bank, the old Westback Bank building in Ganmain. So it's got character. It's a very charming space that I that I work from and share the teaching and the space as a gallery. So it's it's both an active studio and a gallery space. So it's pretty cute. And one thing I love about what you said is it's not just, you know, a place or a bit of time for people to come and learn painting, but it's about boosting that wellness injection really, I guess, around yeah. mental health, that just time out. Um, and I think it's really beautiful that you've got so many opportunities in regional Australia to create your own businesses. As you said, you're in an old bank. I mean, the architecture in the Riverina, by the way, is stunning. So you do find mm -hmm. these really interesting um, businesses and pop-ups yeah. based yeah. in architecturally beautiful heritage listed buildings uh, that must have been quite special for you to be able to set up in that space yeah I waited for it I waited patiently and i um, very lucky to get it so I feel very grateful to be here um, I was in an old Red Cross building which was on a different scale I mean I've come in here and painted this and freshened it up but the Red Cross room that I was in initially was charming and rustic. And so there's lots of spaces in the community where that you can you can run a business from. And just if you've got a little bit of a creative mind and open to, to opportunity, I think. I mean, for me personally, I didn't expect all this to happen. I was very fortunate. But I 
this happened because of the community, not because I had this massive business goal. I didn't. I came here and connected with the community who embraced me and this little Ganmain community where I am is just incredibly charming, I'll say. And they've embraced me so it's it's easy to, to give of myself and, and they've supported me in this business because they know what art and creativity does does for you, your soul really, mm. your wellness. <laughs> yeah. Um, so did you have any, I guess, concerns or preconceptions about moving and starting up a gallery in a town like Ganmay? Just for context, how what's the population of Ganmay? I think we're about 600 people in the village, but there's a lot of um, farms and a lot of people that are outlying, like within the hour, hour and a half from here. Um, there's a lot of farms. So there's a lot of people that you you don't see day to day, but they come to the centre for, you know, you know, mail and what have you. But, um, yeah, so roughly 600 in the little village. I think there's about 300 um, residences. Um, so... It's small. So, yeah, I had a hesitation and, and um, I'll be honest, I didn't have uh, the intention to stay, but somehow I watched my business unfold in front of me and that's, that's the truth because of the community. So, yeah, my hesitations were how the hell do you make um, an income? How do you survive on an art-derived income? And... You know, and funnily enough, you can. But I'm not here to uh, to make mega bucks. I'm here to have a life mm. and and enjoy the environment. So, you know, for anyone who's looking for that, you know, the country regions just um, they're just so grounded, so grounded. Yeah, and they're really supportive. And when a service comes into town that they haven't had access to in a long time or perhaps ever, my mm. observation has been that they really rally behind it because they want it to succeed and mm. they believe in it, they nurture it, and um, they really get behind it with everything that they have. But at the same time, it also is a reciprocal relationship where they also want people who move to town to have the same adoration and respect and buy-in of the town themselves, like itself. Has that been your experience? Absolutely, 100%. 100%. Yeah, the, the, the community have certainly rallied around and have ensured that um, I had a space to work. Um, when I first came here, like I said, I was in the Red Cross room, but then I had a probably nearly 12 months of, you know, an uncomfortable space. But, you know, then, you know, with patience and with help from the community, here I am in this delicious little studio. So, um, yeah, it, it's about the community because, you know, you, you're you given the opportunity to be yourself and to unravel I don't know, services for, that they need. And there's been nothing like this in, you know, there's a couple of other little galleries now, which are great little small ones. So, you know, Ganmain is now becoming quite an arty little place. I mean, it's just all Ganmain. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love that. Usually when something happens organically with flow and ease, that's when you can really enjoy that experience. Um, just yeah. tell me outside of the gallery and the community, what are some of the things that you do or enjoy either close by in Gamayne, Coolamon or even beyond? Because we saw on the map earlier that you do have obviously access to Sydney, Canberra, Mel um, Sydney, Canberra, Melbourne, reversed for you, um, yeah. in sort of three to five hours. But what about the Riverina and Murray regions? What what do you like doing? For me, I'm, I'm arty. <laughs> so I hit nature. So I love... Initially, I came here, I walked the paddocks of the farm and, you know, but now I go down to the river, Murrumbidgee. I'll go down to little um, creeks, um, you know, things like that, and I'll wander, I'll take photos. So I'm a nature lover and happy to go and sit on the grass and look at the water. But 
there's all sorts of other things. Like, oh, Narendra is fantastic. They have a koala. Um, they have a water park. So I love to swim in summer. Um, what else do I do? <laughs> I love to paint outdoors. I mean, that's a dream for me to do that somewhere where, you know, you're under a gum tree, you're, you're just hanging out with the birds. So that's, to me, that's really special. But Wagga provides also lots of activities. Like if I want to go to the, you know, the civic theatre in Wagga, um, movies, things like that, that's less than an hour away, 45 minutes to Wagga. So it's a major city in the Riverina. And, you know, places like, there's so many beautiful places, Galore Hill, like if you if you want to climb, you want to go for walks and things like that. So, and it's most... Um, activities are either between 30 to an hour away from here so there's lots to do you know Aubrey is only I think an hour and three quarters you know so there's lots to do and I think I say this on yeah. every webinar I think until you've gone and experienced the Riverina Murray region you don't realize how diverse every single area and town and village is from yeah. the architecture to the landscapes, temperature, all of that. So, you know, you could go to the Snowy Valleys for a day, um, then down to Albury another day, or as you said, go to Narandra up the road and go koala watching or, tw um, you know, bird watching. Um, did you find that when you moved there, you were talking about going for walks in the paddock and whatnot, how did you find that influenced that space, that different energy, that different landscape? Did that influence your art or your capacity or creativity in that regard? Yeah, I think that coming from a busy Coffs Harbour, um, my mind was just racing. So being able to walk the paddocks, um, walk the red dirt, I call it, and and the dusty red stuff out here was, I found it beautiful and, and relaxing and um, soulful really, filled my cup. So being able to be quiet and rest like that for a short period of time in this environment certainly did allow space for me to, to grow creative, you know, with my creativity. Um, so much so as I wanted to share it with everybody. So I didn't want to just paint my, by myself. I wanted to share it. I'm actually a, a social butterfly, so I love having everybody come to me. So, yeah, I certainly grew from that quietness out here, I think, that peace that's in the country. It's very grounding. I keep saying that, but it is. It's yeah. really grounding. And, and like I said in the beginning, I did not plan to stay. I was going back to my family work that are up on the Gold Coast now. So I've sort of forfeited a life to enjoy the peace here in Ganmain. So, and that has, yeah, helped me grow with my art. And I think... So, I think most people who will be watching this will be looking at the artwork behind you and probably keen to see what that's about. Tell me about the artwork behind you. This is a student behind me. <laughs> this is not mine. Um, one of my students. And the room is full of my students at the moment. So I am so proud of the, of the people that are painting here that have never painted before. And... Yeah, okay, I've given them the skills to, to learn, but they've had to be willing and open. And so the art behind is from Leanne and, um, and she's a little bit of a quirky chick and I love that about her. So, I don't know, yeah, I'd love to show you all the arts in the room, but maybe maybe someone can come and visit. <laughs> well, I, I was about to say that's the perfect plug, isn't it? So... Um, <laughs> You know th th what people say. Um, they usually their advice is if you want, if you're interested in a tree change, um, think about what's important to you in terms of, I guess, a, a checklist um, of what you're wanting to 
have in a, a town or community or access. And we've got on the website, um, countrychange.com.au, if you head over to plan a visit, you can have a look at the um, towns and we're actually updating the website really soon. But here you've got Coolerman, which then also scrolls down to a bit of a glimpse about the region, a video with some locals. Um, those locals are amazing, by the way. They run a beautiful um, uh, B&B, um, but also has key information around living career opportunities and some more information about the shires and some of those tree, tree change stories. But there is um, up here contact information for Laura, who is our council, and she's able to link you in with more information if you're interested in starting a business, finding out more about employment opportunities, et cetera, et cetera. But the best way is to come for a visit and obviously um, coming to Linda's studio in Gan, Maine, which is 10 minutes away up from um, uh, west of Coolerman is a great opportunity. I'm sure, I'm sure, Linda, you'd be willing to give people a bit of a tour of your studio. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And they'd feel very, yeah, they'd be welcomed for sure. Yeah, awesome. And, I mean, just up the road here you'll find a lovely coffee at Fisher and Farmer, a beautiful store, Coolerman. Um, I think there's... I could give a few people a plug, but I, yeah. But the coffee is great too. So, you know, we're oh, pretty lucky really. I have to say the food and eating opportunities in the Riverina Murray are solid. Yeah. Like obviously being in the food bowl or one of the biggest food bowls in Australia, you've got access to really uh, fresh produce and that relationship with food and the producers and that connection with land I think adds a special bit of love into the food that's definitely, um, you know, you can definitely taste it and feel it. Was there anything from a tree change perspective, um, advice that, or sort of insights that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I, yeah, I would actually. Um, some people can come to a new town and feel extremely isolated. I did, even though I had family not too far away. But I think if you... I mean, for me, I came and explored and I I introduced myself and said, hey, I'm just, I'm new here. And as soon as you actually open up to people and um, generally the country community will open up to you. So I introduced myself. I walked into the premises. I've made myself comfortable and sort of found the places where I wanted to go and visit and connect it. So it's not only up to someone inviting you into their town it's up to you to to share your energy as well so just be open and communicate with people and i found that it was very easy for me i was lucky oh look i think yes. that's that's beautiful advice and it's something that i've heard echoed from a number of different tree changes and look it's moving is one of the most stressful things you can do so it is about getting out of your comfort zone and being willing to admit that hey i'm in i'm new this is vulnerable i'm i don't know you you don't know me but you know it's yeah. there's an opportunity for growth and expansion as, as you said you never dreamed of the doors opening for you that have opened so it's just no. it's beautiful no. so no. Thank you so much for sharing some of your experience with us. And um, if you're interested in finding out more, head to countrychange.com.au. Make sure you follow Linda and her gallery. Uh, it's called Lush Creative Galleries. If you have a search on Instagram, you'll find that feed and follow her. Um, any final words, Linda? No, thank you for the opportunity to chat out about my community. I'm very very chuffed to be here. So thanks for the opportunity. It's been no, great. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And next time, hopefully, we can get a bit more, uh, a few sh more shots of the student artwork. Which the art. I'm going to have to come <laughs> buy up. I you think. will. You will. <laughs> you will. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.